Hi, good morning, Dr. Melody here. Let me make sure that my internet is connected well. So, just one moment. It looks like Instagram is doing okay. You reconnect. Hey, good morning, Laura. Okay, there we go, awesome. So great to see you guys, I have missed you all. Good to see you, Lisa and Linda, Laura, Paula. Awesome, Jennifer. Wow, Fatima, so great to see you guys. We have our Insta fam on this side, our Facebook fam on this side. Good morning and happy Monday to you. Man, I hope that you have had a wonderful weekend with your family and a wonderful Mother's Day, uh, whether you are a mother or you are spending time with your mother or other women that are mothers to you in your life. That's such a blessing, right? And so, man, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I certainly did as well. Thank you, Laura. Hey, Ray, good morning, good morning. It was not only Mother's Day this weekend, it was my anniversary. And so my husband and I, uh, we don't have kids, and so we went away for our anniversary weekend and had a really incredible time. Hey, Patty, good morning. And so I've missed you guys too. We started traveling on Thursday morning and just got back last night. And so I missed you on Thursday, I missed you on Friday. Hey, Suze, good to see you. Sue or Susie and uh, wow so we are back and I'm just super happy to be here with you tomorrow morning I'm gonna try to come on for our live Devo if I can but I'm headed to Denver tomorrow and so then I'll be there all week for a conference as well so um, man it's just busy but it's so good to be here with you so thank you for being here with me today we are talking about a lie last week and the week before, we began debunking lies, right? So if you've been with us for these live devos for the past week or two, we have been going through all different lies that we live under. And it's just, it's not a good place to be. We need to understand what the lies are or what the half-truths or partial truths are and then compare them against the truth of God's word. It is the one that tells us that that is our standard that we are living to and that we measure everything else against, right? So... That's what we're going to be doing this morning. We're talking about a lie that says you can do it on your own or your own way. So this is specifically when we talk about our health journey that we, we want to have control, right? We want to do it our own way. We want to sometimes just kind of put our foot down and say, no, this is how I'm doing it. I'm going to do it like this. And we want to do it our own way uh, without God and uh, we either leave him in the dust or we say he doesn't care. And all of those things are lies as well, uh, whether we think he doesn't care or we think that he won't help us or doesn't want to help us. And so we really need to look at that. And so that's the lie that we're going to be going over. Hey, Tisha, good morning. Or Tisha. So, man, this is the lie we're going over today. So let's pray. And if you haven't yet done it, go ahead and share, tag, and invite if you haven't yet done that. So if you're on Instagram, Go ahead and tag another Christian sister, another friend that would be encouraged by this message. And if you're on Facebook, go ahead and share, tag, or invite. Okay? So, oh man, we just lost our Instagram uh, feed. So let me try one more time to go back live. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so if you haven't yet shared, tagged, or invite, go ahead and do that. So. Let's pray, and then we will dive in to our message this morning, debunking those lies, all right? Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for safe travels this weekend. Thank you for a wonderful time just with family and friends. Thank you that we are all surrounded by so many people that play different roles in our life and that we had a weekend to celebrate mothers and motherhood and those that have maybe aren't our biological mothers, but they have impacted our life, that we get to just celebrate those special people in our lives. And we get to remember those that are not here with us anymore. Thank you so much, God, for family, for community, that we don't go through this life alone and that you do not leave us. We thank you so much, God, that you do not leave us, that you want us to turn to you and to give um, our burdens and our cares and our desires and our, our dreams and goals and aspirations to give them to you because your word says that you will then guide us. You will direct us. Man, we want you to be the leader of all the different things in our life. Forgive us, God, when we put you by the wayside or when we think we can do it better than you. 
We ask, Holy Spirit, that you speak through me this morning, that you speak right to our hearts with exactly what we need to hear. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. 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 Hey, thank you, ladies, <laughs> for coming back. And uh, the ones, oops, the ones that, uh, that I lost originally on my feed, there we are, that I lost on my feed on Instagram. Thanks, ladies, for coming back. So, okay. Have you ever been in this lie? Have you ever been caught in this lie, specifically when it comes to your health? This, this can apply to many different areas of your life, but have you ever been in it in your health where you have thought, I can do it my own way. I know what I want to do. I know how I want to do it. So I am just going to do it on my own. Have you ever done that? And if so, what was your experience? Did it work out the way you wanted? So have you ever been in that lie before? Have you ever done that before that says, I can do it on my own, I can do it my own way, and we really kind of put God by the wayside? Is anybody brave enough, willing to say? I know that I certainly have. Have you ever done that? And if so, what was your experience? What was your experience? So many people uh, don't think that... Uh, thank you, Linda, for tagging friends. So many people don't think that God cares about their health, that God cares about their health journey and that their struggles, their struggles specifically with their body or with food. Many times people don't think that God really cares about that because that doesn't necessarily, that's not like a salvation issue, right? The way we view our body and the way we treat ourselves. Good. Thank you. Nikki, Patty, raising their hands. So sometimes people think that God doesn't care about this part of our life because it's not a salvation issue. He only really cares. This is what we think. He only really cares about um, our heart and have we accepted Jesus and are we going to go to heaven and has he forgiven our sins and all of this. Oftentimes, that's the only category that people put God in. But let me tell you, he cares about everything that you care about. He cares about everything that you care about everything that's important to you. He cares about the fact that whether you view yourself as truly his daughter, as, as God's daughter of the King, as a co-heir with Christ. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Let's see. Uh, let me see. When I tried to quit smoking, I failed each time. Thank you so much for sharing. I surrendered over a year ago and he did it. That's awesome. That's a great example. Thank you for sharing that. We can try and try and try in our own strength, guys. And oftentimes it's going to be more difficult than it needed to be. Or we think that we're alone in the struggle because we think that God who's supposed to care about us, who we've heard loves us, but we think he doesn't really care about that part of our lives. Hey, Faye, good morning. But I will tell you, he cares about, dang it, I don't know how that keeps happening. Sorry, Instafam, I keep switching my camera. He cares about everything that you care about. He looks at your heart and what grieves your heart, he, he mourns too. He sympathizes, he empathizes. He's been every place that we've been. He's felt everything that we have felt. And so when we're in this struggle and we feel like we're alone, he wants us to know that we're not alone. And we're, when we're in the struggle and we're, we're just trying to grit our teeth and just do it on our own in our own strength, he wants to give us the strength to do it. But oftentimes we don't even ask for it because we don't think he cares. But he loves us with a love that we have a hard time even fully understanding because he is love. He loves with a, with a love that is not a human love. It supersedes that. And so we have a hard time sometimes accepting that love or feeling worthy of that love, right? Can we be honest? Hey, good to see you, Matthew. We have a hard time accepting that love and then living from that place. So we try to do it on our own and we think that God doesn't really care when it comes to our health. But if your health is actually stopping and blocking you from having your proper identity in him, if your health and the view of yourself and your body and your self-esteem and your worth and your value are tied up 
and your lack of self-confidence and low self-esteem and all of this, if all of that is tied up and it is not measuring up and matching to who he says you are, then he cares about that. He wants that to be healed and removed and restored and redeemed so that it can no longer be a stumbling block for you. And oftentimes that's what happens in our health, isn't it? So let's turn to the good book and see what it says. What does it have to say about this? Man, awesome Trey. So let's turn to the good book and see what it has to say. If you've got yours with you, if you have your Bible, this is the truth that we measure everything else against. This is the trueness of who we are. This is the fullness of who we are. Hey, Nella, the fullness of who we are is in here. And if you don't know it, and if it's not sunken in here yet, and if you haven't used it to come into your life and to heal these deep wounds, then yeah, you're going to keep doing it on your own. And yeah, you're going to stay in these lies that say, God doesn't care about that area of my life. I guess I must do it on my own. That's exhausting and unfulfilling. Doesn't it seem like it'd be more fulfilling if the creator of the universe, the one who loves you the most, if you actually accepted his love and said, hey, will you lead me and guide me in this? Because if this is a burden on my heart and I desire to change and I desire to grow in my purpose. I desire to grow in my fullness of who I've been created to be. And these areas of my health are stumbling blocks to me. Don't you think he cares about that and wants to remove those stumbling blocks and show you the way and guide you into freedom, guide you into victory? You are not meant to do it all on your own because it is going to be tough. It is going to be hard, but how wonderful to think that you have the most amazing help that was ever, ever could possibly be there for you is, is waiting for you to ask, ask to be led. Man, he's so good guys. But oftentimes we underappreciate and undervalue his love, his desire to, to help you. So let's see what the good book says. Turn with me. Hey, Rachel, good to see you too. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 16. We've got a few verses, two different verses in Proverbs chapter 16, and then we'll turn over to Psalms 37. Proverbs 16 verse 3, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Wait a second. What did that just say? What did that just say? Commit to the Lord whatever you do. Does that mean your health? Kind of. Does that mean your family and how you raise them and how you interact with them? Yeah, probably. Does that mean your work, your job? That means everything. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. And what? Why? Your plans will succeed. If that doesn't speak life and victory into where you are right now, then I don't know what will. This literally just said, whatever it is you are doing, and if that means your health journey, whatever you are doing, commit those to the Lord and you will succeed. Have you ever felt like you have not succeeded in your life or in an area of your life or especially in your health? Have you ever felt like you haven't succeeded? You tried that plan. You tried this and that. You tried every diet on the planet. You've joined every gym. You've done everything. And yet you feel, you still feel like you haven't succeeded. Have you committed it to the Lord? Or are you still trying to do it in your own strength? Man. Good morning, Rachel. Linda says, submit to the Lord everything you do and your plans will succeed. Commit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, we could say submit as well. But commit. Man. Matthew says, why is it sometimes I feel like I do things alone even when I ask for his guidance or help? 
but God shows on his time. Yeah, that's a part of the trusting part. That's a part of your growing. When you do commit it to the Lord and then you still feel like sometimes I feel alone, well, ask the Holy Spirit, where may I be blocking hearing from you? Where may I be blocking? Hey, is that Amber? Where may I be blocking hearing from the Holy Spirit? Where may I be blocking um, not listening and following his guidance? Where may I still not fully hear his voice yet and his guidance? Is there anything within me, right? That goes back to David saying, search my heart, O God, <laughs> search me. Find if there is any offensive way within me. And so we need to ask God too, is there anything that I may be doing that is blocking me from hearing him? Or in those moments where you feel like he is far away and that you do still feel alone, even when you feel like you've committed it to him, then this could also be like a testing. Will you stay faithful to him? Will you stay seeking after him even if you don't feel him? How, how strong is your faith? How strong is your commitment, your conviction? Will you still stay pursuing him and not giving up and not losing faith even when you don't feel him in the moment? Sometimes that is a testing of your faith and sometimes that is an area where you will need to grow in your spiritual maturity and in your faith and in your trust, right? When you don't see the things that you're hoping to see yet, when you don't feel the presence, we don't live off of our feelings all the time. We shouldn't. So where may I be allowing my feelings to be leading and guiding me when I need to, I need to get above my feelings sometimes? So great, great, great comment. Thank you so much. So that was Proverbs 16, three. Let's look at Proverbs 16, nine. It says it in a different way. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. So we can, we can pursue the things that we wanna pursue, but God is going to begin to guide and direct that. That's why sometimes things don't play out the way we thought they would. Or that's why sometimes amazing things happen that we never could have imagined or predicted. So we may have some plans and it's good and okay to have plans, but the Lord will begin to direct your steps and guide you. So are you going to allow God to guide you? Are you going to allow your journey to look a little different from the next person? Are you going to allow God to lead you and guide you and may, gave, may give you some direction and instruction that just seems like that doesn't make sense? But are you truly trusting and obeying as he guides your steps and saying, because God's ways are not our ways, right? His ways are not our ways. So oftentimes things are not always going to play out how we thought. There might be some curveballs in there or God may be wanting you to be obedient and still say yes to him even when he's guiding you in a way that just seems a little odd. But will you submit to him? Will you still obey as he guides and directs your steps? Will you still be patient when he hasn't yet revealed to you the next step? That's another one too. That's another area of growing in your spiritual maturity? Will you still be patient, trusting in his timing? We want things so fast and we want them right away all the time. That's just the way our culture is, right? But God's ways are not our ways and his time is not our time, but his timing is perfect. So will you learn to keep the faith even when you are in a season of waiting for him to reveal to you your next step. Will you keep the faith and say, God, I know you haven't abandoned me, even though I don't yet see what's next, or I don't know how you want me to move next or what you want me to do or how I should respond. All these different things that play out, man, you will reap dividends in your life and in your, the ultimate, when you finally cross over to the ultimate arrival and achievement of that thing. 
you will be so much more spiritually mature because you have gone through all these other tests and trials and obedience and trust and, and growing and learning to hear his voice. All these benefits are going to happen as you start going on your journey with him, letting him direct your steps. You can have a plan, but you have got to allow him to direct those steps because he's doing things that you would have no idea about. So do you trust him? Do you trust that he loves you enough that he wants to give you the desires of your heart? Do you trust him enough that you can believe he has planted the desires of your heart? That's on a whole nother level. That you no longer second guess your dreams and you no longer second guess your desires and goals. That you can say, God, you have planted those in my heart, so you lead me and guide me into their fulfillment. And that fully applies to your health, but applies to any other area of your life. Wow. That's on a whole nother level. Yes, Paula says, not our time, but God's time. Yes. Trey Trey says, not my works, but the Lord's works. Yes. Right, Matthew says, is that why they say if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans? <laughs> it could be. It could be. So good. Man. So, great encouragement here as to what we should do with this. That we should no longer be trying to do it in our own strength and in our own way. Someone that you know, that you have access to, someone has a plan for you and wants to lead you and guide you in this way. But you've got to recognize it, and you've got to submit to it, and you've got to be willing to say, yeah, God, I trust you, that you do wanna see me achieve these things in my life. You do wanna see me get to another level of self-confidence in my body, of learning my true value and my worth. Because when I make changes with my body, I feel better about myself too. Like there's wonderful things that begin to happen. But if you try to do it on your own strength, you're going to burn out. Man. Matthew says, why God wants me to be here, wants me here, or why does he want me in this place when I want to be in a better place? You have got to learn to trust in his timing. The better place and the better things and goals that you're envisioning and seeing for yourself you have got to surrender to his timing and, and not doubt that he wants that better thing for you as well. He might actually want something even better than what you are, are thinking of or dreaming of or imagining. But when you start doubting where you are now and you start doubting his love for you and you start doubting that he knows what's best and that his timing for you is best and you get anxious in the waiting and you get um, frustrated and lose hope and... Yeah, no longer impatient is the word I'm looking for. Impatient in the waiting. Man, you are missing out. You're missing out on, on what he truly wants to lead you and guide you in. So really check yourself when you're feeling impatient and when you're feeling like he has left you or abandoned you or doesn't want those things for you as well, doesn't want those good things for you. He is a good father who loves to give good gifts to his children. He loves to give good gifts to his children, but he knows what we need when we need it and doesn't give us things that we can't yet handle. We have to trust in his way, in his timing. He knows. He is so wise above what we could ever know. We think we want these things, right? We think we want to hurry up and achieve that goal in our health. We want to hurry up and achieve that breakthrough or that success level in our business or whatever it happens to be but he knows if we're actually ready for it or not. Because there's going to be a new level of challenges, a new level of testing, a new level of trust that will need to be there for those levels that we say we want now, but he knows if we really, if we really can handle it right now or not. And if we don't have it yet, then there's a work that he's still doing within us while he leads us and guides us and takes us to that place. We've got to get to that place where we, we trust that he has our best interest in mind. And that he has not left us in the trial and in the struggle. Man. The last verse we're turning to is Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 5. 
Psalm 37, verse 5. Again, reiterating the same point. Are we getting this point? Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. So good. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Man, verse 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Man, refrain from anger, turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. Are you getting this? It starts with commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. Man, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's Psalm 37 verse 4. Write down Psalm 37 and go read the whole thing. I want to read the whole thing to you, but read the whole thing on your own and let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. What message do you need to take from it? Psalm 37 verse 4, all the way down. Just read the whole thing, but especially verses 4 through 9 or even through 11. Oh, it's just so good. It keeps going on and on and on about the goodness of God when you wait and trust in him and then what happens to all the other ones who don't <laughs> we've got to know what his word says delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart what are those desires there are they for another level in your life another level of business another level of health another level of, of growth in your family what are the desires of your heart Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give them to you. He loves to give good gifts to his children. He is a good father, better than any father we could ever experience here on earth. And he is the embodiment of love and he loves us with a love that is beyond human love. He is so good. But we are lying to ourselves when we feel like we have to do it on our own or that our way is better than his way. We have such a small, narrow scope and view of our life and of possibility. He sees everything. So he knows what is best for you and when it is best for you. He knows what step is best for you and what path is best for you. But will you trust that? Will you surrender to that? Will you allow yourself to be led by him to go through the trials where he's going to refine you and grow you and teach you lessons that are way far more valuable than you just achieving that goal. He wants to teach you lessons that are far more valuable in the process. But oftentimes we get frustrated in the process and we don't allow ourselves to grow closer to God in the process. We get frustrated with him. We get impatient. We forget, and we, we forget that he has our best interest in mind, that his ways are above our ways. Let's not do that, guys. Let's not do that. Nella says, if we are spiritually strong, we are also physically strong. My prayer is not to be impatient, but to be patient and wait for what he has in store for us. For when we commit to God, he works in us. Yes. Linda says, God's way is the best way. Trust in the Lord's timing. Man, it is not always easy, right? It is not always easy. But it is going to be far more worth it for you when you trust in him and you stay committed and you stay surrendered and you begin to learn his voice and trust his steps. Laura says, I heard a message about the desires of your heart and it was so good. The desires of our heart become God's desires as we seek him. Yes, so much better than the skinny me or the new car, etc. Right. And beginning to get to a point where God says, my thoughts are your thoughts, right? You have the mind of Christ. My thoughts are your thoughts. My desires are your desires. As we begin to mold ourselves into the image of Christ by pursuing righteousness and pursuing holy living, as we begin to do that, our mind changes. And God plants different desires in our heart and they're good and they're, they're righteous desires. It is okay to have the desire to want to make changes in your health, to make changes in your physical body. It is okay. 
Oftentimes we think God doesn't care about that, and that's the lie. That's the lie that then creates a separation and a division between us and him. It plants seeds of doubt, and it makes us feel like we have to do it on our own strength, and that's when the trouble comes, because there will always be things that we cannot do in our own strength. So we must commit our plans, all of them, to the Lord. Excuse me, letting him direct our steps, letting him direct our path, and growing in spiritual maturity while we go on the journey. Not getting frustrated in the process, not getting impatient in the process, but submitting your anxious heart to him. Man, so good. Matthew says, I pray every night to God for everything that he gives me, and I pray for those around me and for the next day. It helps me sleep. It's like God is putting me to sleep to not worry, exactly, to not worry about the next day. Yes, that he will look to those who surround me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So good. Thank you so much for being here with me this morning. What a message. Just wanted to encourage your heart today. Encourage your heart that your desires... Don't feel that you're alone in that. God will, will, he'll search your heart. And if your heart is in the end, he sees the motivation and the desires of your heart. So he's going to lead and guide you in what you need. So remain faithful, remain patient. You're welcome, Alita. Thank you for being here. Man, I just hope that Holy Spirit spoke to your heart with what you needed to hear in this message. So good. He's so good. Dive into the good book. Spend time with him. Get to know his voice. Get to discern his steps that he wants you to follow. Don't be afraid of the process. Don't be afraid of the trials. Don't be afraid of the journey. He's with you. He's with you. So good. You're so welcome, Linda. You're so welcome. Awesome. Well, I will see you on uh, let's see, I, this week is going to be interesting because uh, I'm going to Denver for a conference. And so I know for sure Monday, I mean, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I will be at the conference. I will do my best. Um, I will do my best on Tuesday and Wednesday to still come live if I can. Might need to go a little earlier tomorrow because then I need to head to the airport. Um, so anyway, I will do my best to see you live this week. And if you if I'm not able to join you live, then go ahead and get into the word on your own or on a Facebook page, Fit Plus Faith Facebook page. You can go down to our video section and we have literally hundreds of videos of replays of live devotions that we have done together. There is not a lack of inspiration there available to you, but nothing is going to supersede your relationship and your time with God. So, all right, it's my pleasure to be here with you. But we need to make sure that we are spending and not using this as our only input and connection with God, right? That you're prioritizing your own time with him as well. So I will do my best to see you tomorrow and Wednesday, but Thursday, Friday, um, I'm pretty sure I'll already be in the conference. So love you all. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, man, excited to kick off this new week with you. Nella says, thank you so much for sharing. It's so encouraging to know that. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your day. This is Dr. Melody with Fit Plus Faith. See you later. Bye.